Hey everybody, I am Carolyn Byers. I'm the Education Director at Madison Audubon and this is the end of week one of summer camp. It's very exciting. So week one has all been about sight and we learned well, first we used our eyes to explore nature and we learned a little bit about how our eyes work. We thought about how all people have different eyes and different abilities with their eyes. And we thought about how animals see the world a little differently. And today I'm really excited to talk a little bit about sandhill cranes because they're super cool animals. And they're also like there are really large, awesome birds that we can see pretty easily in our neighborhoods. You know, there's a lot of really big birds that, you know, you need to go to a little more wild place to see them. And I've seen birds hanging out or sandhill cranes hanging out in schoolyards, like walking up to the doors at schools and tapping on the windows. I've seen them in um, neighborhood front yards, backyards, in parks, like playground parks. So sandhill cranes are really, really lovely and they're super cool. And one of the things I love about sandhill cranes is how they communicate. So they do have really loud voices and we'll learn about that a little bit next week when we start thinking about sound. Um, but they also communicate a lot through body language. And as humans, we're pretty used to this, right? So you can look at another person and usually tell a little bit about what they're thinking, just about the way they're standing or the way their face looks, right? So I want everybody to think about how you would know if a person was angry. And if you're watching this live, type it into the chat and I'm going to go peek on over at the Facebook page right now while we're waiting to see who is typing, typing things in. So let me know if you're here, if you're watching, and also if you have any idea about how we would know if a person was angry without talking to them. Let's see what you think. Okay, I, I'm just gonna tell you, I think. <laughs> so when, when we're thinking about um, human body language, right? We use our eyebrows a lot. We use our eyes. We use our mouth. Um, when we're thinking about our face, right? Eyebrows that look like this and eyes that look like this are pretty angry and angry mouths might look like this or like this, you know, and an angry body. If we're a person might look like this or like this, mm -hmm. but if we're happy, we look a little bit more relaxed and we might have a little smile. We might have soft eyebrows. My glasses are right here. It's kind of hard to see my eyebrows. And we might have more relaxed eyes or maybe excited eyes like this. Um, and our body, instead of being angry and tight like this, might be a little bit more, might be a little more relaxed. Like, hey, hi, that kind of thing. So humans use body language a lot and it's really useful for us. Um, and cranes do this too. So I'm going to show everybody a picture of sandhill cranes first, um, because it's very nice to know what we're talking about before, before we, uh, before we start talking about it, right? <laughs> All right. So here's a picture of a sandhill crane and they are really tall birds and they have a very long neck and a long body and long legs. And usually they're using these long necks and legs because they hang out near water a lot. They like marshes and wetlands and they use their long legs to walk through the water so they can keep their body out of the water so they don't get wet. And then they use their long neck to reach down into the water and look for food. And sandhill cranes use their long legs and their long neck and their long wings um, to help them dance. and use their body language, right? So they have all these different postures and behaviors that help them um, talk about how they're feeling and what they need. Um, cranes also have this really nice bright red patch and this bright white cheek patch. And that really helps other cranes see where a crane's head is really fast and really quickly. It's kind of like how um, humans, we see faces everywhere. Has anyone ever looked at an electrical outlet and seen a face? 
or maybe seen, I don't know, some rocks on the ground and they look like a smiley face. Um, we see faces everywhere. That's because we're really keyed in on what a human face looks like. And the same is true for this bright, bright red patch for cranes. They're really keyed in on it. So cranes use a lot of different behaviors to say a lot of different things. And they can say happy things and they can say angry things. <laughs> okay. And before, before we get into all those specific things that cranes say, let's talk a little bit about the year of a crane. Okay. Um, and if you are in our super explorers club, you got one of these awesome things. It's a field guide to crane behavior and it's from the International Crane Foundation. Um, and if you're not in the Super Explorers Club, you can find this on our website and we'll drop a link in the comments so you can go check it out yourself. Um, but in the back, there is a page that talks all about a crane's annual cycle. And that just means everything that happens in one year for a crane. So in the spring, a pair establishes a territory, it builds a nest and it lays eggs. So this is what a lot of birds are doing in the spring. They all set up nests and they raise babies. And the parents of cranes usually only have one chick. Sometimes they have two, but crane chicks, they need to do a lot of growing and they need to eat a lot of food. So they usually can only raise one chick. It's a lot of work. <laughs> So in the late summer, the crane chicks, they learn how to fly. And then the parents and the chicks migrate south for the winter. Cranes do not stay in Wisconsin all year long. It is a little chilly here for them. <laughs> it's hard to find food when it's so cold. So in the winter, they feed and they loaf around. And basically, they get strong again because raising babies and migrating is hard work. So they need to get strong again. And then they all migrate north and the chick ends up separating from its parents. It's ready to be on its own now. And then it all starts over again. The parents have new chicks the next year. Um, and so all of these behaviors that we're gonna talk about are a part of that life cycle. It helps cranes talk to each other either about raising a nest or defending a territory, okay? And so let's start, let's start thinking about some things that cranes would do. And we are going to use our bodies to act these things out. Okay. We're going to do, it's kind of like crane dancing, crane yoga. We're going to do a little bit of that. So for the first few things we're going to do, everybody needs to get their crane head ready. <laughs> so we've got a big long neck and we've got our crane head and you can do either hand if you want, or you could even have two cranes <laughs> that'll get complicated later though. So first we're gonna do preening. And preening is when a bird cleans and arranges its feathers and makes sure they're all exactly where they need to be. Because if a bird's feathers are all ruffled and out of place, it's gonna be hard for them to fly. And they always wanna be ready to fly in case a predator shows up. So they've gotta be ready to get out of there fast. So everybody take your crane head and start moving it around like this and rub it over your body. Pretend you're giving yourself a little scratch. You can reach all the way in back. Um, and we're just preening our feathers. Maybe do the other side. feels kind of nice. Give yourself a little massage. Mm -hmm. All right. So we covered preening. That's a nice thing that cranes do. The next thing we're going to do is foraging. So everybody needs to stand up and get your crane head ready. And cranes, usually when they're foraging, they lean over. I'm going to stand on my, my table here. They lean over and they reach their long head down and they move their head around. And if you're in the water, they might dip their head down and poke around a little and then reach their head back up. Okay. So everybody do a little crane foraging. Go down, pick things up. Got it. <laughs> All right. And another thing cranes like to do is um, they will, let's see, what do we want to do next? There's so many. How about we pretend we're on a nest and let's incubate our chicks, okay? So when birds are incubating chicks, that means they're keeping eggs, oh, incubating eggs. They're keeping their eggs warm. They usually lose some of the feathers on their, on their stomachs, on their breasts. And that means that the heat from their belly and from their body can get to the eggs really nicely. So when they sit down on the nest, they kind of wiggle to get into place. So everybody walk over with your big long crane legs and sit down on your nest 
and then wiggle a little to get into place. Make it really comfy. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> okay, so while I'm sitting on my nest, I am gonna peek over at the Facebook page just to check and see if there's been any comments. And I don't see any yet. So if you have any crane stories or sightings or questions, you can type them in there and let me know, okay? All right, so while we're on this nest, you know, cranes, they usually have to um, defend a territory. Um, and when they're doing that, they don't wanna fight another crane because, Cranes have really big, long beaks that are very pointy. And if a crane were to jab another crane, they could definitely get hurt. So cranes, like a lot of other animals, do everything they can to avoid fighting each other. So they do a lot of posturing and using their body to say, hey, I am tough. You don't want to mess with me. Okay. So cranes, when they're defending their territories, they have a few different displays. The first one is called an arch display. And so I'm going to show you in the picture. It's a little like this. The crane will hold its wings up, stand tall, and it will hold its head up and back. Okay. So let's all try that. Let's see. I'm going to, it's called an arch display. So I think I'm going to arch my back like this. I'm going to hold my wings up. And I'm going to point my head up. So if we were cranes, we would think we were very tough right now. <laughs> so everybody do another arch display. Arms up, heads up, wings up. Oh, very nice. And we might do this a few different times, pointing in different directions, saying, hey, this is my territory. Back off. Okay. So when, let's see, they also do something called a drop wing threat, where their head points back over their back and the wing tip on one side droops low. Okay. This is going to be hard for us because we don't have a long neck. So maybe we want to pretend one of our hands is our neck and the other hand is our wing. So everybody throw your head back like this and drop one wing. <laughs> it's funny that this is threatening for a crane. All right. Maybe it's not funny. It's neat that we all communicate so differently. <laughs> okay. So that was a good territory threat. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, a threat walk. This is something I think humans can relate to. Sometimes we walk a little tough. So this is one where the crane is walking with its head up and it walks with very stiff legs. Okay. So let's do that. So everybody extend your toes really stiffly. Let's see. My toes look like that. <laughs> and walk and be really tall and really slow. Okay. Everybody do that. Walk around your room. And next we're going to add in a ruffle threat. So raise some of your feathers and then shake them a little. Look at the person or the other crane. And shake your feathers and then put your head down. Okay, and look up again. Shake your feathers and look down. Ooh, we're very tough cranes. Okay, now we're gonna do a flap display. That's where we flap our wings very quickly, but we don't fly. Everybody, no flying. Okay, and then put your head down and point it at whomever is intruding in your territory. Okay, so you can flap really hard, point your head down and look at someone. All right, very nice. So we have a threat walk, a ruffle threat, and a flap display. So we're talking right now about all of the different ways a crane might say, hey, this is my territory, you need to leave. But what if we want to talk about cranes that are trying to solidify their pair bond, which means they're saying, hey, we are a pair and Let's, let's make a nest. Let's have an egg. Let's raise a chick, right? So I want to share with you um, some other crane postures. And I have this one online. So I can share my page like this. So these are all parts of what is called a crane dance. These are things cranes do 
well, scientists don't listen when they're in love, right? I think I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's okay to attribute emotions like that to animals. It's pretty easy to see that they feel a lot of the same things we do. So when cranes are in love, they do crane dances. And some of the things they do are head bobbing like this. A pair will bob their head to each other. Um, they do wing flapping. I know we just did a pretty aggressive wing flap. I think this one's a little gentler. They also jump and they kick their legs a little bit. They'll bow to each other and they'll toss twigs. So how about we try to do some of those things now, okay? So let's start with head bobbing and wing flapping. That'll be pretty fun. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen if my computer will let me. There we go. Okay, so if you want to, you can have your two crane heads like this and you can have one bow and then the other bow <laughs> or bob their heads. Or if you want, maybe you have a friend that you're with or a grown up, you can both bob your heads to each other, right? Or you can do it like me alone. <laughs> bob your heads. Very nice. Okay. And so then cranes can also get their whole body involved and they can do more of a bow. And let's do a silly human kind of bow. So everybody, Twirl your hands a little and go like this, one hand in front, one hand behind, and then bow. So everybody do a little, little, little human crane bowing, okay? Awesome, lovely. So we did some bowing, we did some head bobbing. Let's see what's next. Ooh, jumping and wing flapping. That's gonna be very exciting. Okay, let's do wing flapping first. I feel like I need to warm up a little bit before I start jumping and <laughs> kicking. Okay, so let's do... Papa is in his bedroom. I'm teaching right now. Okay, buddy. I'll see you soon. Okay. Um, so we are going to do a little bit more gentle wind flapping, wing flapping now. So everybody flap your wings like this and smile at the crane you love. Excellent. And now everybody jump up high, but kind of like a floating jump, not a mean jump. And then do some, do some fun stuff with your legs, like kick them out a little bit. That'll be good. Very nice. All right. Everybody's done some jumping, some flapping. Oh, what's next? Oh, twig tossing, my favorite. Okay, so I don't know a lot of the details of this behavior. I think maybe it has a little bit to do with building a nest because they use twigs for that. Um, but I do know that when cranes are displaying for each other and trying to, uh, well, when they're dancing like this, one crane will reach down with its beak and pick up a twig off the ground and they'll throw it up into the air. <laughs> and then the other crane will do that and they'll keep doing this back and forth. Um, so everybody, you can find anything in your house really that's okay to throw. So maybe a stuffy, maybe a little dish towel or a little cloth. Um, maybe a pen and with the cap on <laughs> and you can pick it up off the ground and then throw it up into the air. Maybe do that a couple of times. All right. Very nice. So cranes can say a whole lot with their behaviors. And we just talked about how cranes can say, hey, this is my spot, get out. If they're being aggressive. And we talked about ways cranes can say, you're my partner, let's have a nest, let's have a chick. I love you. <laughs> so what I want you to do next is think up something that your, your imaginary cranes might need to say. Maybe you're gonna pretend that you're a crane and there's a coyote coming onto your territory and you need to tell that coyote, get out of here. Because even though coyotes aren't cranes, they still understand aggressive crane behavior. <laughs> um, and maybe you want to pretend that you're a crane talking to your partner saying, let's make a nest. Maybe you want to do some courtship dancing. Okay. And maybe you just want to make up something silly. Like maybe you're going to pretend that a crane and a unicorn are best friends and they're going to go on an adventure together and they need to talk about that. <laughs> Whatever you want to do make up a little story about it 
and then put on a little performance. Maybe you have some grownups that you want to show your play to. Maybe you can convince your grownups to be in the play. I don't know. Um, or maybe you want to Zoom with a friend or a family member and show them what you created and maybe tell them a little bit about cranes. That'd be so cool. Okay, so I'm going to peek back over at the Facebook page to see if there's any questions or comments. And I don't see any yet, which is totally fine. If you're watching this and it's not live, um, you can still write questions and we'll come back and answer them again later. Okay. All right. So let's see. I think that's all I want to say about cranes and their dancing because um, cranes are really amazing creatures and I love watching them. Um, I do want to say that this is just week one of summer camp, Forces of Nature summer camp. We have three more weeks in session one. Next week is going to be all about hearing. The week after that is going to be about smell and a little taste. And then week four is all about animal superheroes. So animals that have senses that are, are things humans can't do, like echolocation and like seeing UV lights, okay, or UV, UV rays, not lights. Um, so all of these weeks are going to be super cool. And then after that, it's going to start all over again. So if you're not registered in the Super Explorers Club this time around, you can jo join for our second session. It's going to be great. Um, and I also want to say that all of this programming is free. You don't have to be a member. And um, it's all supported through grants and donations from, from people who think, who, who want to support what we do. So if you are in a position where you can donate and you think that, um, our programming is worth supporting, we're going to drop a link in the comments for that too. Um, and if you're not in a position to donate, it will still be here for you always free and always for everybody. So enjoy. Happy summer, everybody. Happy Friday and happy crane dancing. Bye.